Okay, good morning everyone. I'm John Fox, Director of Product and Market Strategy at PTC. Um, I wanted to kind of um, talk a little bit about what we focus on at PTC. Um, it's software and tools to help manufacturers develop products. Um, and we're very focused on uh, helping companies develop greener products. Just a little context here. Here's some, here's some headlines um, that I grabbed that kind of illustrate why this is becoming so important for manufacturers. Each of these headlines, if you notice, focuses on a different dimension of what we call environmental performance of a product. Um, the first one talks about a regulation called REACH. Is anyone here familiar with the REACH regulation? A, f a few. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very large, complex uh, piece of legislation, perhaps the largest that came out of um, the European Union to date. Um, very simply, for our purposes here, think about it, um, it's potentially going to restrict thousands of substances um, that are found in everyday products. So companies are really grappling today with kind of to understand what's in their product um, in order to remain compliant. This headline talks about a company that um, substances of very high concern, SVHCs, these are the targeted substances under REACH. These were found in some um, shoes. Um, and the companies are, um, they, they, they failed to um, do the proper notification. So there's real implications, um, ranging from fines to being completely barred from the European um, market. So that's, that's kind of the restricted substances dimension of environmental performance of products. Um, but others as well, um, the, uh, there's recyclability, um, companies as you've heard are, are, are they're starting to measure the carbon footprint of products, um, more focused now on water, perhaps that's the next carbon, um, what, what is the water required to make products, and of course the Walmart um, initiative that, that was already mentioned. Um, so why is this important to manufacturers, um, particularly manufacturers as opposed to other types of businesses? Um, depending on how you measure this, you know, up to 80% of the impact of a manufacturer is not the facilities, and that really gets a lot of the headlines. You heard about cap and trade legislation and, and software that tracks the energy usage in enterprise in enterprises. Um, doesn't really focus on the footprint of products. The, it's more impactful, um, but much more difficult to, to measure. So for example, if you wanted to measure the energy usage or, or um, perhaps greenhouse gas emissions of an enterprise um, versus what's kind of the embodied carbon in all the things that I buy in my vast, um, vast um, supply chain. Uh, so what's the embodied carbon in this mobile phone that I make, for example? That's the challenge that we're focused on, helping, helping companies track that. And we work with a lot of companies. Um, right now, a lot of our um, focus is on that restricted substances. But these are the different ways the companies are measuring that environmental performance. They are looking at restricted substances. Um, they're looking at um, what we call material footprint, so the recyclability of the, of the product. For example, how much aluminum is in there, how much metal. Um, but also how much um, recycled content I'm using in that product. Um, Getting into the era of LCA, carbon, energy, water, all of these life cycle assessment um, metrics. And also companies are more and more using what I'm calling here internal scorecards, where they're looking at these measures and perhaps others and um, coming up with internal indexes that help them track the improvement of, of the products. Um, we did a survey um, of 300 manufacturers, more than 300 manufacturers responded across industries. Um, of the folks within these companies who are concerned with this, the product stewards, um, the supply chain managers, the product developers who are, who are focused on these issues. And one of the questions we asked them was, what information do you collect from your suppliers? And the results um, kind of supported what we've experienced in talking to clients and, and, and prospects and manufacturers out there. Um, as I said, a lot of um, the information being collected right now is around restricted substances. Also, reuse and uh, recycling. But we're starting to see a broader definition of environmental performance. And you see carbon and energy use 10% um, or less 
But we also ask, what are you doing now and what do you plan to do? Those, those two, carbon and energy, really jump. Um, granted, this is what's being planned, and it's, is that actually going to come to fruition? We'll find out next year when we do the survey again. Uh, but this just gives you the landscape of what information is being exchanged throughout the supply chain. And that's a big part of you know, what we're trying to help with. It's one thing doing the analytics, um, which we do, but a big part of that is getting that data. And more and more, since the data is just exploding, um, analyzing a product using imperfect data and still coming out with um, useful information that can help you make decisions and how to, how to design and how to build your products. So I just wanted to touch on a couple concepts here. Um, you know, where we think we can add a lot of value is, um, since we are a PLM company, a product development company, um, when you make these decisions earlier in the process, so we said, you know, 80% of the environmental impact is in the product and the supply chain. Well, 80% of the impact is determined at the design stage as well. So the lion's share is in the product, and the lion's share of those impacts are decided at the design stage. So it wouldn't be great if you could integrate that into your product development process. So as soon as you have that bill of material um, when you're designing the product, start performing these assessments. And we're in fact doing that on restricted substances. So look at the traditional bill of material. It's called the bill of material, but it's really a bill of parts for the most part. Um, companies are tracking the parts that they buy. Um, and the PLM story to date is about managing that bill of material, um, tracking that data, um, tracking the reuse. You see some reuse in this, in this diagram where a part is used in one sub-assembly sub and also used across um, in another sub-assembly. It's also reuse possibilities across the product. PLM's about managing that. But these new environmental um, requirements really require a more granular understanding of the product and um, actually management of the product to do this systematically. So you see, it shouldn't just stop at the part. You need to know the materials in those parts. And even below that, you need to know the substances in the materials. So this is what we're really focusing on. Our product's called Insight. We track that. So when you have, when you have um, substances, for example, if you want to know where the lead is in, in your product in the concentration or where the PVC is, um, a material, um, having this granularity and tracking this systematically allows you to actually understand that, not only in the products you're making, but ideally as you're developing it, so you can make those decisions. Let me avoid, avoid those targeted substances and lower my risk. When you have the material, you can do all sorts of interesting breakdowns about the automotive industry is doing this now. Um, they need to report how much metal, how much um, glass, how much fluids, all to drive recyclability of the products. And then, of course, with LCA, which we're, which we're talking a lot about here today, um, the foundation of LCA is the understanding of the materials in the product. You also have to know things like the process by which those materials were made, um, the, the suppliers where you got them, the, 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 um, the logistics, all those factor into it. But this is really kind of, think about it as a driving structure um, behind LCA. And as someone mentioned, LCA traditionally is kind of, it, it's, it's kind of, people working on one product after the fact, after it's designed. Um, and it's so labor intensive, so manual, it can take more than a year if it's a very big product. And it's very expensive. So we're thinking about making this more systematic, integrating it with these PLM design principles and having more of an impact. So just jumping ahead to kind of, I mentioned our product is called Insight. Imagine that sitting in the middle synchronizing with wherever your bills and materials are managed. That could be in a PLM system or in an ERP system. And grabbing all this data off to the left, it could be, it could be a declaration from a supplier. Um, but more and more, as this data is exploding um, with regulations like REACH, um, thousands of substances you need to know. LCA, certainly, there's all these um, bits of data that you need. It's not just declared data from suppliers or even tested data, which is part of the equation, validating that declared data. It's going to be a lot more about estimated data. 
and models. As, as Michael mentioned. Um, getting that data, synchronizing it with your product management systems, and then producing um, these analytics and reports that allow you to make better design decisions and ultimately report and prove performance to regulatory authorities or, um, or customers, whoever's asking. And more and more people are asking, as, we, as we've seen. Um, just one last point on LCA. Um, we're really looking at ways to um, you know, make, that, make that more systematic, um, really um, make LCA for the enterprise. Um, and not just kind of a side science project. Um, and we recently made an acquisition of a company called Planet Metrics. We're really excited by their technology and how, their, um, how it leverages LCI databases and does rapid analysis that, that allows you to kind of quickly um, zero in on hot spots. So an example here um, is a screenshot where you're able to identify hot spots in your product and in your supply chain. So um, in here we see the, the, the size of the box is the total emissions of CO2. And the color indicates um, the transportation emissions. So that's just one type of analysis, but it's not necessarily driving to a number that you can put on a, um, a label. You know, that's going to be an ongoing challenge. But hey, wouldn't it be great if we could isolate the, the, the 10 suppliers out of 1,000 that are really hot in terms of carbon footprint? And let's focus our efforts there. Um, there's all sorts of interesting things you can do there to start moving in the right direction. Um, there's definitely motivation among manufacturers to report this. Companies are asking, how have you done an LCA? Um, there's something called the Dow Jones Sustainability Index where they're auditing and companies want to get on this sustainability index and, and part of that index and the audit process looks at product performance and a big part of that is have you done LCAs? Have you done it on a certain percentage of your products? Um, so there's definitely that motivation but more and more there's, there's um, internal motivations as well. Am I getting better? Am I being more efficient in my supply chain? And things like that. Any questions? Come on, there's got to be some questions. Sorry. Who's the intended user for this? For this, um, there's a, you know, it's companies we found are still kind of developing new processes. These are essentially new processes. Unlike PLM and design, where, where software comes in is it's making existing processes more efficient. With this kind of new constraint on products and manufacturing, there's some new processes there too. We've certainly seen that with restricted substances. Who's getting this data, and how is it being disseminated across um, the enterprise? So there's a there's a role we're seeing more and more called the product steward, um, and a lot of that a lot of times that person is really an interface between engineering and the supply chain. Um, that kind of persona, that profile as the definition of environmental performance of products is expanding, his or her role is also expanding. So that's, that's a role that we're tracking. But a lot of times these initiatives bubble out of supply chain. So it may be a person in supply chain tasked with doing this analysis, as well as engineering. So there's no kind of universal set of, set of users at this point. But the audience for this information is potentially the whole enterprise. So people buy, people doing purchasing, people doing designing. Um, it, um, they need this type of information, if not doing the analysis, but the results of the analysis to do their jobs better. So what, what LCI data are you using for the sources? We, we, um, are you guys using the uh, That's part of it. Um, but what we're really interested in is providing a framework. So not only to have a certain kind of default databases, and we want to leverage as many as possible, we want to have a framework where if a manufacturer has a legacy of, of using a certain database or for a certain region, and there's a lot of them, um, we want our framework to kind of be adaptable um, to support whatever a, a, a company wanted to do. Yeah. Um, for your research, have you found that many vendors actually understand or have this In terms of, can they actually track the metrics for sustainability within their individual suppliers? 
right? Like it varies across companies and it varies across um, measures. So in the restricted substances dimension, certain companies are really, really good at tracking that. Um, one is um, a couple of our customers. One is um, Seagate. They literally have a chemical accounting of all of their products. Motorola is another one. The automotive industry is doing really well there. But as you go into these other dimensions, it gets less and less. And that's what a lot of these initiatives, the headlines I showed, are about. Companies, they're starting to spend money. They, they're, they're recognizing the need. Um, but it's a very difficult, difficult challenge, particularly as the, as the dimensions are expanding and expanding. And is it primarily in areas that are highly regulated? Yeah, highly regulated. It's as, as much um, about market requirements and customer requirements as it is about you know, saving the world, if that even comes into the equation. It's very much driven by what your customers are asking for. Um, and more and more companies are asking for, you know, have you done an LCA? Even if they're not asking for an absolute number, are you measuring this? Um, and that's counting for a lot at this stage. I think as, and we're seeing this in the sustainability index as well, um, the criteria and perhaps the level of performance of companies trying to get on that index is rising and rising and rising. It's getting harder to get onto that index. And I think it's just because the standards are, are getting better and, and companies are getting better getting this data. Very good. Thank you, John. Everybody. Thank you.